Joshua 21, 43. So the Lord gave Israel all the land which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they possessed it and lived in it. Pretty simple. All right. So first thing we're going to do is read through <coughs> chapter 6. Let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Maybe we just do three verses. I guess that makes it seven. Let's just do two verses and I'll read the rest of it. How's that sound? Uh, Wanda, do you want to start for me? Okay. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and then no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all of the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people, will, and the people can charge straight into the town. So Joshua called together the priests and said, Take up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then he said to the people, Go forward and march around the city and let the armed men go on before the Ark of the Lord. And it was so that when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram's horns, horns before the Lord went forward and blew the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the people, Do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the, until the day I tell you to shout, then shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to compass the city, going about it once, and then came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Stand. 
Excuse me, I can't see it. That's fine. No worries. The seven priests with the ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Again, the armed men marched both in front of the priests with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day, they again marched around the town once and returned to the camp. They followed this pattern for six days. <coughs> On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet, blast Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city shall be under the ban, it and all that is in it belongs to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot and all who are with her in the house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom we sent. But as for you, only keep yourselves from the things under the ban, so that you do not covet them, and take some of the things under the ban, and make the camp of Israel accursed and bring trouble on it. But all the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, and the priests blew the trumpets, and when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted, with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight ahead, and they took the city. They utterly destroyed everything in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the harlot's house and bring the woman and all she has out of there, as you have sworn to her. So the young men who were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brothers and all she had. They also brought out all her relatives and placed them outside the camp of Israel. They burned the city with fire and all that was in it, only the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. However, Rahab the harlot and her father's household and all that she had, Joshua spared. And she has lived in the midst of Israel to this day, for she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Then Joshua made them take an oath at that time, saying, Cursed before the Lord is the man who rises up and rebuilds this city, Jericho. With the loss of his firstborn, he shall lay its foundation, and with the loss of his youngest son, he shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was in all the land. All right. Okay. <coughs> yeah. What is the treasury of the Lord's house? What exactly? So it was just where, you know, most palaces would have a, a treasure room. They didn't have a palace. They just had the tabernacle. But they did acquire a lot of uh, articles of gold and silver and precious, uh, just precious materials from the Egyptians before they left. And those were all used, um, a lot of those items were used for the tabernacle. Remember, the, the, um, all the adornments, the, the high priest had that breastplate that was made entirely of gold and it had the gemstones in it. Um, so they, they don't really have a treasure room, but they just have a, a treasury, I guess, of, of precious um, materials. Well, that's what I wonder, what did they do with it? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Carried them in gold boxes. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Good question, though. All right, so we have this uh, rough outline here. The Lord speaks to Joshua concerning the battle plan against Jericho. All of Israel would circle the city of Jericho once a day for six days, but on the seventh day, they would circle the city seven times. Uh, Joshua warned the people not to take any items under the ban. After the seventh time circling the city, all the people would shout and the priests would blow their trumpets. The walls of Jericho fell down and the Israelites completely took the city. Only Rahab and all of her house were spared from God's judgment. And then the end, Joshua uh, prophetically curses the person who would rebuild Jericho. So that's our rough outline of what's happened in this chapter. Um, anyone have any thoughts or questions on this chapter? Of the number seven. Mm -hmm. 
directions on this, he wanted them to know none of this was in their strength. Mm -hmm. yes. It was walking around and them doing just what he said, including the shout and the number of times. It also was everyone, not just uh, men of fighting age. This and time it was... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you asking or saying? Well, that could be a question. Okay. Sounds like everybody when it says mm -hmm. yeah. that. Good question. Anything else? Why did they have to burn the town down? <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like they always do that. Burn Why destroy? Burn everything. Well, sometimes God lets them. I'm surprised with all the animals he killed too. The food. I was surprised he killed the children too. The women and the children. All right, good questions. So the ban in verse 17, and the city shall be under the ban. It and all that is in it belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Is that what the ban is? Sorry, verse? 17. 17, and the city shall be under the ban, it and all that is in it belongs to the Lord. Is that what the ban is, that they take nothing? Yeah. Yes. Mine's just devoted. Mine's yes. just devoted. Mine's just devoted. Mine's just devoted. Mine's just devoted. <laughs> yes, so there is, actually we can move right into translation, translation changes, because that I think helps us a little bit, because yes, that, that, under the ban, what does that exactly entail? Um, what does everyone else say? Right, verse 17, verse 18, um, where it talks about the ban. Mine says the same thing as Sarah. Okay. Sarah and everything in it must be completely destroyed. Okay. It's an offering to the Lord and says nothing about a ban except for, you know, Rahab and her house and all that. In verse 18, that's what it says. 17. Can you read uh, what it says in 18? Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction. Okay. Are you, okay. Was so that the set band? apart for destruction is what yours says then. Yeah. So we have um, under the ban, set apart for destruction. Anyone else have anything different? Well, devoted. Devoted, devoted to destruction. <coughs> um, devoted to the Lord. Oh, devoted to the Lord. Okay. And 17. Mm -hmm. And then I think if I wrote a note here that New King James Version, instead of under the ban um, or things set apart for destruction, it says accursed things. So from what I can tell, based off of these clues that we have here, things that are under the ban, meaning they should not touch them, they're not even, they're not even like worth the materials. Because more than likely, some of these items may have had some sort of precious metals or or gems or anything but they're not even allowed to touch them or take them or anything not even for god more than likely they're idols is is what i'm gathering from them they're there's something that is used in the practice of of worshiping false gods um even if it has precious metals or anything like that you know attached to it it's it, those things are not even listed in the items that can be taken for the Lord. Because remember, it says all the silver and the gold and articles of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. 
well clearly that's separate from whatever is under the ban so um, my guess is that the articles under the ban or set apart for destruction or you know whatever you want to call it those are items that are um, involved in the worship of, of false deities yeah good question uh, the other translation change that I noted was one verse later in verse 19 um, all the silver and gold articles of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. Um, other translations say set apart for the Lord, um, consecrated, sacred. Does anyone else have anything different? Okay. So that all of that, those things together tell me that the things under the ban and the things that are set apart for the Lord are it, it, it shows a complete contrast of the two. One verse to from the next, it shows a complete contrast. So things that are, are okay to, to keep for God and things that are not okay, clearly it would be because it's involved in false worship. So, Any other translation changes that you guys want to note? I have read about uh, shouting, like might have been verse 10. Mm. That was quite different from mine, I thought. Joshua commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor let your voice be heard, nor let a word proceed out of your mouth. Mine said, Do not give a war cry. That's what it was, war cry. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Because mm -hmm. that, that I, I wonder, it makes me just wonder, is that, a more accurate translation of what the you know the original Hebrew is, or is that a little bit of like creative freedom and in interpreting there? Because it makes you wonder: do people like not say a single word to each other the whole time, or is it saying don't have any kind of war cry? Maybe there was some you know cultural thing that you did in wartime. I don't know. As far as like. There's always seems to be a lot of yelling in battles. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Hoorah! You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're trying to psych each other up or what. <laughs> but maybe, yeah, I don't know. Do we know how big it was? Jericho? Mm -hmm. Like how, how many miles around? Um, no, no, because people haven't quite exactly pinpointed where it is. Um, because oh, it was never rebuilt, huh? Because, yeah. <laughs> well, well, there we go. Try. <laughs> we'll come to that. Um, because the archaeology is having a hard time pinpointing where exactly was this Jericho. In, in the town of Jericho, where was this? Where was this that happened with the walls? Um, so a lot of people are wondering if it was a military outpost of some sort because they have found evidence, archeological evidence of a military outpost. Um, and that would make sense with walls and things like that. But there's still a lot of questions. There's a ton of questions that are unanswered at this point. So maybe it was a military outpost. Maybe it was a regular town. Not really sure. Google says there is a Jericho. There is a Jericho, but where exactly in the area of Jericho was this that happened? No, you know? I don't know. They just said it's, it's in the West Bank. Yeah. The Jordan River. You can still find Jericho on a map, but finding archaeological evidence of where this structure stood. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. The, it says it's, a, it's an oval-shaped mound that contains the remains of humanity human activity dating back. Uh, I won't read that because I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lead anyone astray. <laughs> well, mine says something about the mound in there, but it says there are just lots of layers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they don't, they can't identify yeah. which one is which. Yeah. Which is the one that, right. Exactly. So, yeah, still a lot of questions. All right, let's go ahead and do, go through the people and their roles in this chapter. 
First one is Joshua. What was his role in this chapter? Like the commander? Mm -hmm. Yes. Leader? Yep. And uh, kind of facilitating the instructions from God to the people. About the priests. The Ark of the Covenant and 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 oh, the horns. Yes, mm -hmm. blow those horns. Yes, that's right. And then we have people of Israel, um, but then we also see armed men, or I'm not sure what other translations say, but some sort of battle ready men. Um, I'm not sure, looking at this, I am not sure still if all of Israel participated in this, all two million people, mm. or if it's just the army men, you know, battle ready men, which would have still been a decent amount of, of people, but then they are the ones that are considered to be Israel in this story. When Who he's are? the battle men. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't have an answer for that. I tried and I tried and I tried to find an answer for just because it bugged me. <laughs> in, in seven, it says yeah. um, advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the ark, but it doesn't say who followed the ark. But it starts the verse with, he said to the people, so that does sound mm -hmm. right. like it's the group and not just the army. Right. So verse 3, for the first time around, and you shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city mm -hmm. once. Exactly. So we, we know so for six days. We know roughly who's involved, but were all of the people involved all of the time? Were they maybe just hanging there next to Jericho while the men did all the marching and then gathered together, you know, as on the seventh time on the seventh day and they all shouted together um i don't know i don't know we have it's a lot of uncertainty as to who was actually doing what but we do know there was a procession of sorts so you had the uh you had some uh army men going ahead then you had the let's see the trumpets the priest with the trumpets and then, then the ark followed them, and then you had a rear guard. So you at least have that procession that's pretty well stated. As far as to where everyone else in all of Israel was at that point, I have no idea. <laughs> I've always thought that they just were the one, everybody was marching around. But now when I'm reading this, I'm going, I actually don't know. I Two know. million people. Too many people. Kind of crowded. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. What what was the, you know circumference or whatever you call that? Yeah. The border. How long was the border of the town? Right. The city limits. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're no stranger to their to traveling. That's <laughs> for sure. They're no stranger to that. But did Jericho have maybe um, uh, men with bows and arrows at the top? You know. And maybe that's why only the, the battle men went around. Um, I, I don't know. These are all questions. These are all questions. I, I wonder know. what the people on the top of the wall, if it was a <laughs> military encampment. What are they doing? What? <laughs> and why they didn't start to yeah. do something to them. Yeah. They were maybe, afraid of them. They were, they said I was going to say, maybe the fear of, yeah, fear of them had something to do with it. Was the crazy is your life in there? The quantity of them. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, they didn't say anything. They were just mm -hmm. in the booth. Mm -hmm. Mind their own business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am, I'm sorry to say, I have more questions than answers for this one. <laughs> but that's okay. We don't need to know all the details to know exactly what God did. Here. And is it because I've been away for a week that I'm 
uh, remind me what was the problem with Jericho? Ah, okay. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. Um, actually, here, we'll just go straight into cross-references. And the, I think this is actually going to clear up a lot of our questions um, that we have on the board this morning. Or tonight, well, this morning. <laughs> I took a nap before I came. Okay, so. <laughs> um, okay, first one is Psalm 135. Psalm is great for it, but I, I will shorten it for tonight. Um, but it's just talking about um, the, the greatness of God's works and, and comparing it to um, the, the foolishness of idols. Um, can I have someone read verses 8 through... Um, 18 actually would be great. I will. Okay, thank you. He struck down the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of men and animals. He sent his signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants. He struck down many nations and killed mighty kings. Sihon, Sihon king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan, and he gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to his people Israel. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, made by the hands of men. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but they cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Perfect. Thank you. So I think that this really uh, helps us to better understand the band a little bit more uh, in terms of it's, if, it, if it truly is what I think it is as far as idols and, and um, items that are used in the, in the worship of false gods, then we're seeing God's... Um, we're seeing God's response to that. He, he has them completely destroyed. And as this psalm so well states, they have eyes and they cannot see. They have mouths and they cannot speak. They are absolutely powerless against the one true God who truly does have power. And that's seen in the fact that they are uh, burned with the rest of, of the city. And they're powerless to save their their people, I guess, of, you, of Jericho, and, and save themselves. And it really, um, you see the, the amazing contrast of, of the two between the idols and, and the one true God. Um, Deuteronomy 9, 5 is our next one. Someone read that one. It is not because you are so good or have such integrity that you are about to occupy their land. The Lord your God will drive these nations out ahead of you only because of their wickedness and to fulfill the oath he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Perfect. Thank you. So that tells us part of the reason why God is, is um, giving this land into the hands of Israel not just because he's chosen them as his, as his people and he's going to give them a land, but specifically this one because he is going to um, have vengeance on the wickedness of, the, of these, these people um, that's been going on for generations and generations. Um, next one would be Deuteronomy 20. Deuteronomy 20, verses 10 to 18. Can I have 
I'm going to read that one. Okay. When you approach a city to fight against it, you shall offer it terms of peace. And it shall come about, if it agrees to make peace with you and opens to you, then it shall be that all the people who are found in it shall form, excuse me, shall become your forced labor and shall serve you. However, if it does not make peace with you, but makes war against you, then you shall besiege it. When the Lord your God gives it into your hand, you shall strike all the men in it with the edge of the sword. Only the women and the children and the animals and all that is in the city, all its spoil, you shall take as booty for yourself. And you shall use the spoil of your enemies, which the Lord your God has given you. Thus you shall do to all the cities that are very far from you, which are not of the cities of these nations nearby. <coughs> Only in the cities of these people, peoples that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, you shall not leave alive anything that breathes, but you shall utterly destroy them, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite and the Perizzite, the Hivite and the Jebusite, as the Lord your God has commanded you, in order that they may not teach you to do according to all their detestable things, which they have done for their gods, so that you would sin against the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So what does this uh, passage tell us about, about our chapter? This proved that Jericho was one of the towns that they did have to destroy everything right. because of, they were unrighteous. It was it was God's way of punishing Jericho. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no. Yep. So, and that's really interesting that it's contrasted with the other instruction. These are, I guess, rules for warfare that we're seeing here. And any other town that's not part of the, uh, the inheritance land, we see um, peace being extended. We see um, people who are being spared, women and children and livestock and et cetera. Um, and so that's, it really contrasts to the instructions for this land that's part of the inheritance of all of Canaan, really. Um, and specifically because, like you said, Marilee, it's, it's part of God's punishment towards those people. But really, the children of Israel were the only God-fearing nation. Everyone else was pagan or yep. idol worship. Yep, you're right. So I think these next few references will help further. Uh, Leviticus 18. Go back. Two books of the Bible. Leviticus 18. Uh, 24 and 25. I think it's um, not this one, but the next one's going to help a lot more. But that's okay. We're going to read this one too. Where are we at? Uh, Leviticus 18, verses 24 and 25. Okay. Brian, would you read that? Yeah. Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways, because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled, so I punished it for its sin, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. Okay. Um, prior to that, this whole the whole chapter was um, laws on immoral relations, and it was just a whole law of sins is basically saying Israel don't do those things specifically because that's what the surrounding nations were doing and Israel was bound to follow in those ways if God didn't set laws in place saying don't do those things um, and so then and then he gives that reason why don't do those things all the other people are going to are doing those things and here's what's going to happen to them their sin is 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 Cursing the, even the land itself, and the land's going to spit them out on, on my command. Um, so we see that. And then just go a couple of chapters over, uh, Leviticus 20. This is going to help us, I think, even more so understand specifically the judgment 
the harshest judgment that's happening against Canaan. Leviticus 20, verses 1 through 5. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Moreover, shalt thou say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of strangers that sojourn in Israel, that gives of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I also will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given up his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do at all hide their eyes from that man, which he gives of his seed unto Moloch, and put him not to death, then I will set my face against that man and against his family, and will cut him off, and all that play the harlot after him, to play the harlot with Moloch from among their people. Perfect. So what does that tell us? Not a clue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys remember the Rosnick's Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, Moloch was Moloch shot the god of child Moloch. sacrifice. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. It was a... That's what the seed gives of his seed, meaning... It was off string. Yeah. It was a, a metal statue that had open hands like this, and they would heat it up really, really hot, and then the parents would place their baby onto the hands of this god and sacrifice their child to it. Yeah. And this was really, really common. It was everywhere, and it was awful. And this is one of the biggest reasons why God is coming against these people, because of this. Um, and it's stated in multiple areas, but this is, um, this one I thought was, I said it the best, so. Um, First Kings, this is our last cross-reference. First Kings. Verse, uh, sorry, chapter 16. Verse 34. And this is actually going to answer our question about the curse. Did anybody rebuild it? Uh, and I can go ahead and read this one. In his days, Kiel the Bethelite built Jericho. He laid its foundations with the loss of Abiram, his firstborn, and set up its gates with the loss of his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. So it did come about. It was prophetic. Somebody did try to rebuild Jericho, and it was exactly the way that Joshua spoke it, uh, or God said it through Joshua with the loss of his firstborn and the loss of his. Um, what nationality was this person that was trying to rebuild it? I don't know what Bethelite is exactly. But we know, we think they know of the curse that Joshua put on it. I would think so. I mean, if people, word travels <laughs> and it really stuck around. I mean, the things that God was doing really, really stuck around. I mean, the fact that Rahab and all of the people of Jericho still remembered the events of the Red Sea, of God splitting the Red Sea, that tells me that it's not just silly news that just comes and goes. I would think so, but I guess I can't say for certain who the, what this kill knew. <laughs> I was just wondering if he was Hebrew. Oh, I see. That's what I mean. If he was. Oh, I thought you were asking if he if he was like forewarned about this and knew about it and no, I and acted even nationality. Though. If he was Gentile or Jew. Got it. Good question. I don't know. Who's the king of Is Ahab is the son of Omri, who is the king of Israel. Who's Hiel? That's who I'm asking. Oh, Hiel. Hiel. Okay. Thirty four. Yeah. I don't know. Does it say who that is? What nationality he is? But then at that time, that king was, it says it, uh, Ahab also made the Asherah, and the Asherah was, was a, uh, yeah, it was a bad thing. It was, it was a shrine. So, he went ahead, though. I mean, after losing the first son, he kept going. Yeah. 
Yeah. Foolishness, huh? Then you put up the gates around the city, so why is... That really doesn't tell me that there was no city there. No, I'm not saying there wasn't one. I'm saying that today, archaeology has a hard time pinpointing where, which, which structure was actually the Jericho and which the miracle God did in chapter 6 took place. So, Heil did not rebuild Jericho? He did. He did. He did. And then, did it stand? Yeah. Oh, like I see. It sounds like it remained. Yeah, the, the curse didn't say anything about Jericho being rebuilt and not standing. It just said the curse on whoever was to rebuild it. Oh. So that's the only okay. specifics we have. Okay. Um, the curse was the loss of his firstborn and loss of his, of his youngest. Um, specifically, the firstborn in setting up the foundation and, and the yeah. youngest in setting up the gates. Yeah. And that's that's exactly how it happened. Um, but it didn't say anything about um, how long it would seem. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just thought it meant. Got it. Yeah. That it would just never, Nothing ever, Nothing would ever never. get built there. Got it. Okay. Yep. So, any other questions on our cross-references there? Did that help answer some questions that we had? Yeah. Let's see. What are we missing? <laughs> the shouting. I have a question on that. Yeah. So this is Kings. Joshua put that curse on. I wonder what that time span is. Oh, good question. Of when Joshua did that and, and this guy. Mm. Um, well... It was about 850 BC when Hyle of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. Oh, that's quite a ways. According to Google. Yeah, that's quite a ways. Because we were in, what, 1399? Yeah. So hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. 500 years? is in uh, one chapter over we see King Asa <laughs> <laughs> she's always so excited that her name's in the Bible it's not one of the books of the Bible but it's, it's in the Bible and it was a good king so. <laughs> and it was a guy <laughs> yeah there's that <laughs> did you know okay I didn't I don't I think I told you guys this uh, I had Asa with me at Costco one day and she was, you know, I don't even know what she was doing, but I was just like, Asa Jean, you know, and I just said it like that. And some mom's talking, she goes, what did you say? And I was like, uh, Asa Jean, I'm her mother, I'm allowed to say that? Like, I was like, is somebody mad at me for not gentle parenting or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> no, she goes, my son's name is Asa James. Uh -huh. I was like, whoa, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think it sounds like. With the, it's like one letter off from Ava, and right, I think yeah. pretty much everybody's used to Ava, so I thought it was, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, was that your question, Marilee, or did you have another question? That was your question. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you for whoever found that. Yeah. Google. Yes. Thank you for Googling. <laughs> okay. So now we kind of come to the point where we do a little bit of a summary um, and some commentary thrown in there. So chapter 6 of Joshua describes this conquest of Jericho by the Israelites under Joshua's leadership. Um, we see that the city was tightly shut. It was anticipating, <laughs> knowing that they were next, right? They've seen uh, the, the line of destruction that. Uh, was in Israel's wake, and so um, they were preparing for that. 
Um, and remember, the Lord told Joshua, I have handed Jericho, its king, and its best soldiers over to you. This meant that even though the battle hadn't even occurred yet, Jericho had already lost, essentially, according to God. It was already done. It was, it was already done. Um, it, was, it was declared. Um, and God wanted Joshua to be assured of this because he was about to give him a battle plan that didn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> it was a really unusual battle plan. I mean, if you think about it, most people are going to be getting out the battering rams. They're going to be getting out maybe some climbing ladders or something. <laughs> Uh, I don't think they were thinking about putting on their walking shoes. <laughs> I don't think that was part of their plan. But that's exactly what God instructed Joshua to assemble a special procession to march around the city once a day for six days. Um, I guess no talking or, or war cries happening in, in the, during this time. Um, but there would be trumpets blowing and there would be the Ark of the Covenant. And those were very important pieces to this procession. Um, on the seventh day, they were going to circle the city seven times. There's that number seven that's just so pops up all the time. And it, um, uh, as far as I know, it just means perfection or completion. Um, just showing that it, this, was, this was God's doing. And it was a, a perfect doing that, you know, he had. Um, and, and creative. Awfully creative. And awfully creative. <laughs> yes. Not like anything else he'd done before right exactly and he wouldn't really do anything else like that again it was really unique mm -hmm. yes and he laid it out as you're saying that made me realize he laid it out for them so it wasn't like they took like they did a little bit mm. and then found out more and then mm. they did a little bit mm. he, he laid it all out this is how you're going to time. win the whole thing yeah yeah yes you're so right. And so really, that put it into the hands of the people to, there's the plan. Uh, it's crazy, but we just trust that this that he, that he is a powerful God and that he knows what he's doing. Follow the plan. Follow the plan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, what do you guys think? I know we had that question up there. Why shout? But also, I think that gives us the question, why no talking? Or, or war cries, or whatever it happens to be. What do you guys think about that? Just if it was just war cries, when we were talking about it earlier, it made me picture like cowboys and Indians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the woo woo, yeah. the, yes. the sounds that go up like that, yes. that are maybe um, giving notice or saying look out look yeah. who we are yeah charge and, and here we come sometimes being quiet is the best weapon mm. and not saying anything mm. i bet that played mind tricks mm -hmm. on on the people of jericho that's true the, the people up, <laughs> yeah. up top uh -huh. looking down why are they so quiet <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the being quiet would have taken away the enemy's desire to shoot arrows at us. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're That's moving, true. like you say, That's a good point. we're going to attack, right. that type of a thing, the war cry that occurs. Yes. But if you're just having a parade around the city, right. what, they probably thought they were crazy. Yeah. Right? They probably thought, what do they think they, they're doing? That's not going to touch us at all. Ooh, we're scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They were doing some like. I think it's a mind thing. That's it is totally a mind thing. They could have been. I mean, if they got to talk, they could be like, "This is a weird thing. Do you think we should have?" I don't know. You know, they. Could, yeah. Yeah. You could see a, a, a coup. coup. The, a coup. Oh, yeah. like, like this is this is. Silly. That's a good point. A goofy thing. That's I'm how it here. happened a lot in numbers. Yeah. When they start talking, you mean to the start, people going yeah, amongst right. each other. Yeah. Amongst yeah. each other, they start. Yeah. Grumbling. Yeah, the grumbling. Yes. That's exactly what I've done a lot of that. Before. I've kind of known for that, so I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Line basics and 
hands to your side yeah. and say, quiet. don't talk to your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> Kindergarten. No poking your brother, no breathing on your sister, no. <laughs> and no grumbling. <laughs> Mm, yeah. Yes. Mm, yeah. And yeah, you're so right. You're so that right. so loud. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Two million people. Two million people yeah. shouting. Oh, scare me. And you're right. After seven days of just silence. Yeah. And what did they shout? Two million people. <laughs> what did they shout? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it was surprise. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and the priest blew the trumpets and the, that's, that's, that's about all I, I can I thought find. there was something that I heard that that kind of that said don't do it this way in verse 5 it says that they were to give a great shout mm -hmm. So you get the trumpet going and the great shout, which that was, you, were, you thought someplace it said what they were shouting? No, not what they were shouting, but, but how they were not to do it. Hmm. I don't remember that. Okay. I think I, the only thing I see of what not to do is the, the band taking, when Joshua is basically prepping them saying, you're going to get into the city and here's what you do and here's what you not do. Once you're once you're taking the city, but I don't think that was anything about the marching or the shouting. I remember always thinking that they were supposed to shout to the Lord, like right. shout oh. God or I don't know something like that. But I realized in verse sixteen it just says shout for the Lord has given you yes. the city. But I think uh, I like, shout for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I took out that <laughs> punctuation and I just made it all together. <laughs> <laughs> okay and so all of this happens exactly as God tells them to do it they were very careful in obeying the instructions which is nice to see <laughs> um, and at Joshua's command that's exactly what they did the armed men at the front the seven priests blowing seven trumpets followed by the Ark of the Covenant and then you have a rear guard, and that's just your procession. We don't know where the people of Israel or all the other two million people are at this point, but that's just your special procession that God specifically laid out. Um, what do you guys think about, about that? It's very specific the way he has it laid out. And once again, we see the Ark of the Covenant. It's always in the middle of all the action. Um, what, what do you think the importance is here in this? Well, it shows God's presence is with them. Mm -hmm. It was towards the front. I mean, he had the yes. armed guys, but then wasn't it the ark? Yes. So he, the ark kind of leads yes. everyone behind. Yes. And it's God's presence to them, right? Yes. And it would be like a, a king leading his, mm -hmm. his troops, right? I also think once you are kind of faced with the... Uh, <coughs> hard to read portions of, of them killing every single living, breathing thing in this city. Um, having the Ark of the Covenant and what that is, is God's presence, I think helps to kind of give moral legitimacy to this invasion and to the complete destruction of this town because if you remove that you remove god's presence god's instruction from this whole narrative you're left with just 
a group of people who are acting on their own, who have decided they're going to take a city and to kill everybody in it. And it completely changes the narrative. Um, but it's very, very clear that this is God giving the instructions here and God's presence there as he leads his people into this. Um, I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I don't think a man could have thought this up. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they would have probably attacked. Yes, you're very right about that. Okay. Part of the, keep going. I didn't realize what time it was. Goodness. Um, okay. Then you finally have Joshua giving the command to shout. Um, all the people gave this mighty shout and the impenetrable walls miraculously fell down. We see this in Hebrews 11 in the, the chapter of the heroes of the faith. Hebrews 11.30 says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell after it had been encircled seven times. Um, this just tells us that to be a person of faith means to trust that God will do exactly as he says that he will do. Um, by faith Israel followed divine instruction and they saw supernatural results like you're saying Marilee no man can make this up and actually make it happen that's just not going to happen <laughs> um, the troops advance into the city Israel burns this whole city but saves you know you've got your silver and your gold and your other valuables for the, the treasury of the Lord and then you have Rahab Rahab is spared and this this is completely fulfilling this agreement and promise made between her and the spies. Um, and then Hebrews 11, verse 31, that very next verse says, By faith the prostitute Rahab, when she received the spies with peace, did not perish with those who did not believe. Um, so it's kind of cool to see Hebrews mentions two feats of faith, one by Israel and one by a Gentile prostitute. But they have something in common, and that's just trusting that God is who he says he is and trusting in his word. Um, that's pretty cool. I was picturing when we read through it, uh, Rahab and her father and her mother and her brothers and all she had. I mean, I don't know if her father and mother sanctioned her being a prostitute or if, mm -hmm. if that was a great disappointment to them. Mm -hmm. But here... I guess if, if, if that was a great disappointment, that would be quite a picture of God that mm -hmm. uh, he was redeeming mm -hmm. their daughter. Mm -hmm. He looked past her life choices and saw that she had a heart that believed. And it showed in the actual sparing of her life, the actual saving physical saving of her life. And because of it, her family was saved, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That probably paints a very big picture of God for that whole Gentile family. Mm -hmm. And it's a taste of what was then later offered to all the nations, exactly as, as God had it planned through Jesus, right? That's what's so cool about it. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> Just a note on the difficult section that's just hard to read. Um, like I said, some people state that Jericho was just a military outpost, so there wouldn't be women or children there. Um, we don't know. We don't know. But that's what some people say. Um, some people say the language of complete destruction or to total destruction is just hyperbole which we do see a lot of hyperbole. I mean, you and I use hyperbole all the time in sports. We totally destroyed that team, you know. We use that all the time. I'm sure they did too. But we cannot assume that that's what's being used here um, in God's word. Um, but that's, that's some of the things that scholars do say. Um, Rahab's mother was there, though, and Rahab was a woman in the city. Mm-hmm. So, verse 21 says, <clears throat> men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. 
Yeah, it's pretty so, specific. Yeah. Especially when you pair it with those other references that we looked at where it said, you know, other towns offer them peace, <coughs> but to these towns that are part of your inheritance, you know, this is part of God's punishment against these people specifically for things like child sacrifice to Molech. God has good reasons for it, and everybody is going to receive this punishment. Um, uh, even more so, even if you just killed the men, the women would then raise their children. They wouldn't be in, your, in the, the Israelite camp with all the other Israelites. They would have their own outside section, just like Rahab and her family. They were on the outside of the camp. They would raise their children in the same practices, in the same ways, and they would, they would seep into Israel's culture and um, uh, just their whole nation. There's just so many parts about this, and then, you know, even if you still just have a hard time with it, we just have to say God is bigger than this. God is bigger than our understanding of this. God is good and he is just and he's loving and if i trust that and i believe that then i read this fully believing that this is within his his character of just and good and loving um, even if it's hard for me to come to terms with even if it's hard for me to feel good about um sometimes it, when i read things and i'm like ooh, it gives me kind of a weird feeling i realize ooh, that's part of me that is is not in line with with God and that's something that he is still working on in me instead of looking at that going that's something that's wrong with God <laughs> that's that's something I look at and go oh there's something wrong with me because I'm not completely in line with him there or that seems um, it seems there could be something else besides I'm not in line with God it could be I don't understand God yes Yes, yep, and maybe I won't ever, yeah. but yes, yeah. maybe there's just more to it there. Mm -hmm. and, and it happened before that if they did leave the women, mm -hmm. the men, the Israelites, yes, then, yes, you know, went to those women and those women led them astray. Exactly. You know? So it's, it's but look what happened with Rahab. Rahab is a, is a different story of that. She's a woman that was left alive, a Gentile prostitute. She could have easily, uh, you know, brought in false gods, false teachings, led people astray. But she was spared because she believed in God. And look what happened. She was able to integrate into Israel's life. She later had uh, her genealogy, Jesus and her genealogy. That's that shows a, uh, a different path, you know, than, than what could have been. Um, but you're right, if, if it was just all of those women, who knows what they would have brought into Israel, you know. So did they, were they then, Rahab and her family, were they brought into the Jewish community? It sounds like it at some point um, because eventually she has children that are in that have that have Jewish heritage because if you trace Jesus's genealogy back to her and there's no Jewish heritage then it wouldn't be continuously traced back to you know Abraham so yes that's what, that's the only thing that we can kind of deduce from that is that they were kind of integrated in yeah. And it would be according to the laws in uh, Exodus and Leviticus. They would have to be following all of uh, Israel's laws and and like everything, just like uh, just like an Israelite would. Yep. Um, we can end this with reading First Corinthians chapter one. I have this all over the Bible tonight, guys. <laughs> But I think that this is um, pretty fitting to end it. First Corinthians chapter one, verses 26 to 31. And I can go ahead and read it. 
For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, and the base things of the world, and the despised God has chosen the things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast before God. But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. So I thought that that was a very fitting uh, text to show. We see an Old Testament example of what of what is being said in the New Testament of God um, using the, the weakness of the Israelites. Uh, they did absolutely nothing <laughs> except for march and shout. Um, but they didn't have a strong army. They didn't have any battering rams. Um, they didn't have anything that was actually going to physically win them this war. But, they, but God decided to use that to show his strength so that um, the only thing that they could boast about in that moment was that they had a powerful God. Any other thoughts on this chapter? Okay. We're going to just do chapter 7, obviously not next week, but the following week. So just chapter 7. You have two weeks to read a chapter, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Denise, would you mind praying for us tonight? Sure. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us together tonight to get into your word and, and learn more about you. And we, we thank you for Rochelle being willing to teach us and lead us and, and doing such a good job with it. Um, Lord, there's so much going on in this world between hurricanes and politics and wars, and we know none of it takes you by surprise so just remind us of that and find comfort in that and we know that you control the wind and the waves and be with us as we go about the rest of our week and lead guide and protect us 